All right, so there is a burning question that the Final Fantasy 16 community has been asking for quite some time now. It's been stoked by multiple trailers and most recently some really cool gameplay footage we've seen. And that question is, why are there two Ifrits and who the heck <laughs> is that second Ifrit? So in these trailers and gameplay footage, we've seen Clive, which we know is the dominant for the icon Ifrit, meaning he can transform into Ifrit. We know that he is the main dominant for Ifrit, but we've also seen a dark Ifrit in an infernal Ifrit. It's been referred to as two different forms and it's possible that there are three Ifrits running around. I know that sounds confusing. <laughs> I will explain what I mean in detail a little bit further in the video. But from the world of Final Fantasy 16 and what we know, there can only be one dominant per icon, which we know Clive is the dominant for Ifrit, Sid is the dominant for Rama, Benedicta is the dominant for Garuda, so on and so forth. But Perhaps this new person, this second person that is existing is also a dominant for Ifrit, is causing the world to basically turn into chaos, which is causing some of the other dominants in their icons to just kind of go berserk and lose control. So some working theories here. <laughs> They're kind of out there, but stick with me. The first one, perhaps there is an illegitimate Rosefield child that we do not know about that Joshua and Clive also do not know about. Maybe this was a child who was abandoned in the past and they're angry at the Rosefield family, so they want to seek revenge and they end up murdering Joshua. It's also possible that this abandoned kid also somehow got the ability to become a dominant for Ifrit. So that's what's causing the world to basically, you know, implode on itself is we've got two dominants here for one icon, but only one should be existing, which is causing that chaos. And maybe their entire plan is not only to get revenge on the Rosefield family by killing Joshua and maybe wiping out Clive, but wiping out the entirety of these kingdoms as well. We've also seen a hooded figure in these trailers. It's very likely that this person is the one who killed Joshua. Clive even refers to that hooded figure as his brother's murderer. So it is kind of likely that maybe that theory could take place. Secondly, at the PAX East panel, they briefly mentioned that there was an ancient civilization known as the Fallen, and supposedly they do not exist anymore, but some of their structures and architecture still exists within the world of Final Fantasy 16. They mentioned that very briefly, and then they just kind of glazed over it and moved on. I'm wondering, is it possible that maybe somebody from this ancient civilization found a way to time travel or maybe stay immortal <laughs> and return to the present day to seek revenge on the civilizations that may have wiped them out and been responsible for them losing essentially control of the world? That one's a little bit more of a stretch, but it is kind of cool that they mentioned that there was an ancient civilization and it does seem kind of odd that they would just mention that as one little detail and move on. Now it is likely that they're just there for the lore and nothing more, but it'd be interesting if the Fallen had a bigger role to play in this story. Next, could this new Ifrit be representation of Clive's guilt? Maybe he feels guilt over not being able to save Joshua, or perhaps, twist here, Clive is responsible for killing Joshua. We've seen Clive transform into Ifrit in the trailers, and when he does, he tends to lose control. He may even black out at some point. So, it's likely that during the attempt on Joshua's life, maybe Clive transformed, battled Joshua, Joshua was trying to get him to calm down and stop, but he ends up dying in the process. Clive doesn't remember. No one else is around to see what happened. So Clive is left thinking, hey, that hooded figure I saw, maybe they're the ones who murdered my brother. But in a twist, the hooded figure is actually maybe Clive. It's a representation, a projection of his guilt of what he's done to his brother. And it's something that he's gonna have to confront at some point in the story. That one is also kind of a stretch, <laughs> but these are theories here, people. They're working theories. Now, the next one, this one is probably the one that is the most accurate in that this secondary Ifrit that we're seeing is actually a representation of the internal struggle that Clive is having to gain control over Ifrit. Now again, we've seen Clive transform and he loses his mind completely to Ifrit. Ifrit takes over and chaos ensues. We've seen other dominants transform and still retain some amount of consciousness and control over their form. Sid, for example, transforms into Rama and it's still Sid. Benedicta transforms into Garuda and it's still Benedicta. So perhaps Clive, being new to this, has yet to actually learn how to control Ifrit, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing Clive fighting Ifrit in his human form, but also in his icon form as kind of a butting of the heads kind of moment, like a, a Bruce Banner versus the Incredible Hulk type of thing, where it's like, hey man, <laughs> we're working on the same team here, 
We need to be partners. I need to be on the same page with you, even if it means I have to beat the crap out of you for you to understand. Oh, oh, call an ambulance, call an ambulance, but not for me. So that could be what we're seeing is just Clive just trying to gain control over Ifrit so that way in the future when he does transform again, it's Clive and it's not Ifrit taking full control. So again, there's a lot of working theories out there. <laughs> the story for Final Fantasy 16 is probably going to be a doozy. They've labeled it as a roller coaster ride, so I'm expecting a lot of twists and turns. But that is the video. Let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think of these working theories, but also what are your own personal theories on what's going on with this secondary Ifrit? Do you think it's an internal struggle between Clive and his icon? to just kind of get on the same page? Or is there really a secondary Ifrit that's running around causing chaos that Clive eventually has to confront in order to kind of restore balance within the other dominants and icons? Let me know in the comments down below. I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to always be excellent to one another. <laughs>